So the question today is, do one-click blog posts suck? You know, for the long-term viability of your blog, and particularly for your long-term search engine rankings, I think they do. You just can't create 50 one-click blog posts with any tool and post them to your blog and expect them to, you know, A, rank, and B, hold those rankings forever. And here's the reason why. There's going to be 10 or 100 or 1,000 other people with a blog in your niche that are all doing the same thing. You have to do something to differentiate your blog content from all the others. Even though GPT 3.5 content's very good and GPT 4 is even better, there's lots of work that you can do on a blog post to make sure that you hold your rankings and that you stand out from all of the other people writing about the same topic. So in my opinion, uh, and you can let me know if, you're, if you think I'm wrong in the comment section, you have to have at least a cursory knowledge of the topics you're writing about. You need to have some sort of expertise that you can apply to these posts. Uh, this means you need to know something about the niche you're creating articles for. Now, does this mean that you have to be the expert in the field you're writing about? So the answer, the short answer to that is it depends. You know, if you're writing about YMYL topics, meaning your money or your life, um, which typically are health and finance topics, um, these topics probably should be addressed by experts. There's ways for non-experts to break into these fields, but it's very, very difficult. But if you're a hobbyist, and let's say you're writing a blog about patio gardening, you don't have to be an expert. But you do need to be willing to add first-person experiences into your one-click blog posts. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to show you the five-step workflow I use when I'm working with a one-click blog post. So the tool that I use for creating um, blog posts is Koala Writer, and it has a one-click blog post tool. And I use that tool to create this article. It's called How to Choose the Best Tactical Flashlight for Your Needs. So um, it created a 1,882-word blog post. Uh, you can see what some of the topics were in here or what some of the headings are. So anyway, this is the blog post that it creates. So the first thing that I typically do is just take it and drop it into Google Docs. So here is that uh, post again. And the very first thing that I do in my workflow is I read over this post and I make sure that everything is factual. So I'll go through this whole post, I'll read it, and I'll just make sure that everything sounds correct. Now. I have a lot of tactical flashlights. In fact, I used to have a blog about tactical flashlights. I don't anymore. Sort of got disinterested in the topic. But the bottom line is I know a lot about them. So I can go through here, and because I have some level of expertise in this area, uh, I'm able to determine whether the content in here makes sense. So that's the very first thing that you want to do, because not all AI written content is factual. So the second thing I do is I look over the document structure. And what I mean by that is I do things like, for example, here in the introduction. This introduction is really long. And when people are coming into a blog post to get a question answered, they want to get to the meat and potatoes of the document quickly. They don't necessarily want to read uh, an introduction that's this long, but I know AI tools typically will do this. And what I mean by looking over the document structure is I try to find places where it's repetitive because that's the other knock on AI tools, especially content created by a one-click blog post, is it can be repetitive. So I'll go through the whole document and I'll look for these repetitive sections and where I can, I'll make some adjustments and edits. Another thing that I try and do is I try and win the Google snippet. So typically, you're going to put a Google snippet somewhere here in the beginning, 
and I'll show you that in just a second. The, la the fourth thing that I do is I add my expertise th throughout the document. So any place I can put a first person anecdote about tactical flashlights in this case, I will do that. The last thing I do is SEO optimize the article. So here's a rewrite of that article. As you can see, uh, everything that I, I went through and made changes in the document I left in red. So you get an idea of the extent of the rewriting I do to a one-click blog post. So in this case, I really shortened up that, that introduction section. And I made sure that I added uh, some information that's just based on my experience using tactical flashlights where I find something that may grammaric grammatically need to be adjusted, I'll do that. See a couple things here. Now, this, this particular article talked about waterproof and water resistance of tactical flashlights, but it didn't mention IPX rating, so I added information about that. And I said, I typically carry flashlights that can be submerged completely. So that lets somebody know that the person that's writing this article actually has used a tactical flashlight before and understands that, and that's a particular feature that they like. And that's how you're going to take your articles done with a one-click blog post and turn them into something where people think that, wow, somebody that actually has some experience in this niche uh, wrote this article. And much of the article that Koala Writer writes is great. I know some people are using Zimwriter or using Jasper. You know, there's a lot of tools out there. And they are doing, uh, on the whole, a pretty good job. But one-click blog posts do need to be massaged and do need to be edited. So the one thing this article did not mention was anything about tactical flashlight manufacturers. So I made sure I added this, and I added this content so people could understand what flashlights I like. So I added the sentence, I own tactical flashlights made by each of these companies and feel they are great brands to consider. So I'm just trying to add personal anecdotes within this post so it doesn't just sound like it was a generically written document that just some tool spit out. Again, uh, beam pattern and color. I'm not going to get into that, but I added a sentence. Just this one sentence. I personally prefer a cool white LED and a more narrow beam for longer light throw, which is the truth. And I put that in there so people, again, understand that the person that's behind this blog actually uses tactical flashlights and knows something about them and has preferences. Another section is called adjustable lumens output. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I just gave an example of one particular flash, uh, actually two particular flashlights that are of different design and why I prefer one over the other. Again, you won't know what a crenellated bezel is. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I added a sentence. All of my mid to large size tactical flashlights have this kind of bezel. Again, just trying to show that there's a real live person behind this article who does know something about this topic. I did the same thing in the power source and battery type. I did the same thing in size and weight. Um, I did, there was something missing from this section about weapons mounted versus handheld tactical flashlights. So I added a sentence here uh, that would tell somebody that if they're using a tactical flashlight on a long rifle, it needs a pressure sensitive switch. So it can be turned on without physically touching the flashlight. So only somebody who's worked with tactical flashlights in the past would know this. Now, if you're just a hobbyist, you know, you'll read other articles that other people have written about tactical flashlights, and you can add this stuff because you've out, gone out and done the research. Does it mean that you have a long rifle with a pressure sensitive switch on it? No, but you could add that. Uh, just to show uh, that, you know, the person behind this has done some research and understands the topic. And then in the conclusion, you know, I just added another paragraph in my experience, blah, 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 blah. Again, just adding personal anecdotes wherever I can so the one-click blog post doesn't just sound like it's been spit out by a tool. 
So you're going to have a blog post that sounds more personal, uh, more pointed to the person that you're writing this for, and won't look like 10 other uh, blog posts that are out there because they're all going to be writing on this topic, especially in this particular niche. So after I do this, um, the last thing I do is I SEO optimize. So I happen to use Neuron Writer. Uh, if you don't know anything about Neuron Writer and you need an SEO optimization tool, I highly recommend it. Uh, there is a link to this tool. You'll find it uh, in the description. So you can go look at it if you want to. I drop it in and make some changes, made of just a very few changes to it. So that article that came out of Koala Writer, when I dropped it into Neuron Writer, made a couple changes, it scores a 69, while the competitor's best SEO optimized article scores a 66. So right away when I post this, um, you know, there's a good chance that I'm going to outrank a lot of the other articles that were in the top 10 of Google. Now, there's a lot of other variabilities that come into play. Uh, the age of your domain, how often you, how often you post to your blog. So, you know, there's, there's other variabilities that will come into play and will determine where you rank. But having an SEO optimization tool really helps you out. If you don't have one and you need one, uh, again, I really like Neuron Writer. And I'm just going to briefly show you. It's available at AppSumo.com. And the cool thing about Neuron Writer, it's a lifetime deal. And you can get Neuron Writer for as low as $69. So if you're not doing anything with SEO optimization, I highly recommend looking at the tool and adding it into your content to, into your contents tool stack because it's really going to help with your ranking. So lastly, uh, you know, I talked about Koala Writer. I use it right now. And it has pricing that starts at $9 a month. Now, Koala Writer is not a lifetime deal. It is a subscription-based tool. It writes in GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about um, this tool, uh, you know, it's, it's been ranking. The articles that it creates are well-optimized right out of the box. I have a video about that. You can go check that out. The articles have been ranking well for me in a couple of other niches that I'm writing in. I happen to have the professional $49 a month plan where I get 100,000 words per month, but you can get in and check out this tool for just $9 a month and just see if it works for you uh, and if you like it. it the, the whole purpose of Koala Writer is to write long form content only. And as a blogger, I don't need all of the other bells and whistles that a lot of these AI tools have. I just want a tool that's meant specifically for writing well-optimized, long-form content. And so far, Koala Writer's done a great job for me. So lastly, I just wanted to go back to Neuron Writer quickly. Um, it does have an AI tool in it for writing, and it works pretty well. And you can also get, uh, it writes in either GPT 3.5 or it does write in GPT-4 as well. So I just wanted to mention that. If you could only afford one tool uh, and you needed AI writing and SEO optimization, uh, you know, Neuron Writer would be one to look at. Just be aware that when you're purchasing uh, Neuron Writer, you purchase specific, you purchase it in codes. So you can get a single code, a double code, multiple codes, up to seven, I believe. Um, and so I'm in it a multiple code here. I get 45,000 AI words per month and 75 content analysis queries for S, you know, SEO optimization. So, uh, but you can get in at a single code and still get 25 uh, content analysis queries, which is great. You know, in the interest of full transparency, I just want to mention I'm an AppSumo affiliate, and I use Neuron Writer. I've been using it for about a year. Uh, I also am an affiliate of Koala Writer, but again, I use this tool 
Uh, it's my current AI writer of choice. So the last thing I'll just mention is I really love it if you could like the video. And if you think my content is useful, please subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave some comments in the comments section. Um, and again, thanks for watching. And until next time, take care.